Welcome to the little city of rocks in southern Idaho. Not to be confused with City of Rocks National Reserve, which is south of Burley. This is a different City of Rocks, nor located just north of the town of Gooding in south central Idaho. Just this fantastic labyrinth of rocks and <coughs> excuse me, tunnels, spires, hoodoos, just an amazing little scenery here set in this canyon. Uh, and we're going to explore it together, look at the geology. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey uh, out here at Little City of Rocks, north of Gooding. We're going to spend some time walking through the scenery a little bit, go investigate the rocks, and then here towards the end, I'll talk you through the geologic history of this region, which is fascinating, tied to Yellowstone, which is of interest to a lot of people, and just really awesome all around. So let's go ahead and head up through here. So this area is a labyrinth of just these rocks sticking out of the ground in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Um, it's best viewed sometimes from the air because you get a better appreciation of how these rocks formed. I think at ground level, it looks pretty random and chaotic, but there's actually a pattern that emerges when you look at these from the air. So let's go ahead and head right through here. Let's actually get up here nice, close and personal to these rocks and take a look at what kind of material we're looking at. Let's head over to this exposure here and then we'll check out the landscape and come up with a, a good story here. Here's a nice exposure on the ground here. So if we look at these rocks up close, you can see that they're crystalline. There's these really nice shiny crystals within the rock itself. Overall, the rock is this, uh, when it's fresh, it's sort of this pinkish gray color. When it's more weathered, it's kind of a reddish brown. But nonetheless, we can see some of these large crystals that are somewhat rectangular. These are crystals of feldspar. But there's also some more kind of colorless to smoky crystals in here, which are quartz. And so the composition of this rock and being a crystalline rock, this is an igneous rock, a volcanic rock with a porphyritic texture, which means it has some big crystals in it, but the ground mass, the fine grain material here is uh, very small. The crystals are very small in the grayish part. And this is a rhyolite. These rhyolites are about 8 million years old. And so the entire little city of rocks is made out of this porphyritic rhyolite. So let's take a look um, at how it looks more in outcrop. As you can see, it weathers into this more reddish brown color. There's probably some iron oxidation that uh, promotes the surface here. In some places, it's quite hard. This red uh, sort of varnish that covers the rock. We can also see that the rock has some crude layering in it as well, which is somewhat odd for rhyolite, but it'll play into our story as we go a little bit further here. So let's maybe walk through kind of a fun little tunnel here. So we're doing both scenery and geology uh, all at once. So there's a little window here through the rocks. And here in the shade, we also get a nice look at some of the layering here. You can see it's quite steep. In fact, this tunnel is somewhat eroded through uh, the layers that we see, these steep layers in the rhyolite. Some nice vibrant green lichen on the walls here. And then we kind of come back out. Let's head down along the stream and take a look at these rocks and come up with a good story here. So these, these rocks are all tied to the Yellowstone hotspot. So eight million years ago, South Central Idaho was directly above the magma plume that now lies beneath Yellowstone National Park. 
So this was ground zero for the site of some truly uh, large, probably, let's say cataclysmic, that's a fun word, uh, eruptions of the Yellowstone hotspot when it was in South Central Idaho. Big explosive eruptions of ash uh, that would have just inundated the landscape for tens of kilometers. And now, of course, the North American plate has moved for the last 8 million years and shifted this part of Idaho off of the Yellowstone hotspot. And it's now currently underneath Yellowstone National Park in Northwest Wyoming. These rocks, believe it or not, are the ash deposits from one of several large volcanic eruptions that came from the Yellowstone volcano. Now at the time it was here, we think the volcanic center, the place where the vent was and where the volcano was erupting, was more or less centered around or nearby uh, the, the city of Twin Falls, Idaho in South Central Idaho. And it's what's known as the Twin Falls Volcanic Center. So that area would have periodically huge eruptions of ash that ash would go up into the sky, but some of it would collapse back down and initiate these big billowing clouds of hot ash, rock, and gas known as a pyroclastic flow. And these pyroclastic flows from the Yellowstone hotspot are interesting because they show evidence of behaving in a way that's a little different from a lot of modern volcanoes. And that is when these big eruptions of ash and these pyroclastic flows would occur. The pyroclastic clouds were so hot that when the ash finally came to rest, uh, it actually um, it actually remelted. So the ash from this pyroclastic cloud actually remelted back into molten rock, and then it cooled and crystallized. So rather than a grainy ash rich rock, what we call a tuff. Instead, you get these more solid rocks of rhyolite. But in doing some of the detective work here, we've been able to determine that these rocks, um, these rhyolites originally were deposits of ash from these big pyroclastic clouds. And these are sometimes called rheomorphic ignimbrites. And so these rocks, again, were so hot that when they came to rest, they remelted, coagulated into lava, then solidified into rock. And so they bear little resemblance to the ash that they originally were, um, but using microscopes, um, we can get in there and look at some of the details and see that these rocks actually have flattened pumice particles and other characteristics that tell us they were erupted um, as pyroclastic flows. So really cool history, and you see these in various places throughout the Snake River Plain related to the Yellowstone hotspot. You also can see in a few places, that's why I'm walking back, I walked right past the outcrop I wanted to show you. Um, but you can also see, hopefully this shows up well with the lighting, places where it's actually folded over on itself. So these hot clouds of ash, when they remelted into lava, they sometimes were sort of oozing and, and, and flowing and folding over the top of themselves. And there's a nice fold right here. You can see the lines running through this material. And there's even some holes here, which may be some of the gas bubbles here, but this goes up and actually rolls over on itself. Again, let me try to get that in as best I can for you here. Uh, right here where it kind of goes into the kind of lighter colored material. You can see that it's kind of rolling over on itself. The layers actually are folded over on themselves. You can see it a little bit here as well with this dark layer here. Uh, this dark layer comes up and actually folds back down onto the other side. You can also see another little part of it kind of curling off this way. So think of this as just as this just incredibly viscous material that's just rolling over on itself, being deformed in a variety of ways. Just a fantastic part of the story. And so that's the story of the rocks here. These, um, 
these rhyolites that formed from these pyroclastic clouds. The second part of the story is this intriguing and inviting landscape of just rocks sticking up out of the ground. And for that, again, a good view from above helps to understand what's going on here. So when these rhyolites were cooling, of course, when they're cooling, they're contracting. When they're contracting, they're developing small fractures, cracks that run through the rocks. And so you can see there's some pattern uh, from the air of the fracturing that occurred in these rocks. And then if we add some of the effects of the basin and range extension, the stretching that these rocks have undergone in more or less east-west direction in the past um, 15 or so million years, and then if we compound the, that fracturing, the stretching, and then compound that with the fact that we get uh, severe freeze-thaw cycles here in this high desert setting, we get water in these fractures in the rock, we get periods of freezing, which expands the water, turns it to ice, that expansion splits the rock apart. And over time, you develop then these fins, these little spires and pinnacles of rock that stick out of the hillside. And that's more or less the story of the little city of rocks here north of Gooding, just this fantastic landscape uh, that records explosive volcanic activity from the Yellowstone hotspot. Uh, and it was all shaped by the effects of fracturing and weathering over the past 8 million years. So just a fantastic place, one of my favorite places to come, especially in the spring when it's green um, and the birds are out and there's a little bit of water flowing through it. Really just a spectacular landscape. So thanks again for joining me. Hope you appreciated this video. I uh, appreciate all you do to support the channel. If you like this video and you want to support uh, my efforts for geology education, there's a thanks button to the bottom right of the viewer. There's also a PayPal link and a Venmo link as well under the video description. So thanks again for joining me from South Central Idaho and the little city of rocks.